Uh, this example is a special case of what is called the discrete uniform law. This uh, model obeys the discrete uniform law if all outcomes are equally likely. It doesn't have to be that way. That's just one example of a probability law. But when things are that way, if all outcomes are equally likely, and we have n of them, and, and you have a set A that has little n elements, then each one of those elements has probability 1 over capital N, since all outcomes are equally likely and for probabilities to add up to one, each one must have this much probability. And there's little n elements that gives you the probability of the event of interest. So problems like the one in the previous slide and more generally of the type described here under a discrete uniform law, these problems reduce to just counting. How many elements are there in my sample space? How many elements are there inside the event of interest? Counting is generally simple, but for some problems it gets pretty complicated. And uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have to spend the whole lecture just on the subject of how to count systematically. Now, the procedure we followed in the previous example is the same as the procedure you would follow in continuous probability problems. So going back to our dart problem, we get a random point inside this square. That's our sample space. We need to assign a probability law. For lack of imagination, I'm taking the probability law to be the area of a subset. So if we have two subsets of the sample space that have equal areas, then I'm postulating that they are equally likely to occur. The probability that I fall here is the same as the probability that I fall there. Uh, the model doesn't have to be that way. But if I have sort of complete ignorance of which points are more likely than others, that might be the reasonable model to use. So equal areas mean equal probabilities. Uh, if the area is twice as large, the probability is going to be twice as big. So this is our model. Uh, we can now answer questions. Let's answer the easy one. What's the probability that the outcome is exactly this point? That, of course, is zero because a single point has zero area. And since probability is equal to area, that's zero probability. How about the probability that the sum of the coordinates of the point that we got is less than or equal to one half? How do you deal with it? Well, you look at the picture again at your sample space and try to describe the event that you're talking about. The sum being less than one half corresponds to getting an outcome that's below this line, where this line is the line where x plus y equals to one half. So the intercepts of that line with the axis are one half and one half. So you describe the event visually. And then you use your probability law. The probability law that we have is that the probability of a set is equal to the area of that set. So all we need to find is the area of this triangle, which is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half equals to 1 eighth. OK. Moral from these two examples is that it's always useful to have a picture and work with a picture to visualize the events that you're talking about. And once you have a probability law in your hands, then it's a matter of calculation to find the probabilities of an event of interest. The calculations we did in these two examples, of course, were very simple. Sometimes calculations may be a lot harder, but it's a different business. It's a business of calculus, for example, or being good in algebra and so on. As far as probability is concerned, uh, it's clear what you will be doing, and then maybe you're faced with a harder algebraic part to actually carry out the calculations. The area of a triangle is easy to compute. If I had put down a very complicated shape, then you might need to solve a hard integration problem to find the area of that shape, but that's stuff that belongs to another class that you have presumably mastered by now. 